Welcome to the Chief Architect Bathroom Demonstration. My name is Stephanie and I'll be presenting today. For our agenda today, I'll start by drawing out walls and dimensioning out our space. I'll place doors, add a glass shower and tub. Then I'll adjust our materials, design a custom vanity. I'll create an electrical plan, show you some selling tools and schedules, and then we'll conclude with our layout sheets. So let's jump into the program and get started. When I open up Chief Architect Premier, I have my architectural tools that appear at the top of the screen. These are items such as walls, doors, windows, etc. You can access each tool under their parent tool, or you have the option to use our drop down menus. And drop down menus are handy when first starting out using Chief Architect as you better familiarize yourself with each icon. In addition to our architectural toolbar, we also have display options over on the right, and then we have our edit toolbar in the lower left corner. Edit tools are object specific, so as I work through my design today, you'll see additional tools populate down here. So next I want to bring up a finalized render of our bath. This is a 360 panoramic image. We're able to look up and down and we can go all around the plan. I'm going to use this as a guide to show you where we're headed next, but I also wanted to point out that 360 images are just a great communication tool. They can be exported out of the software and sent to your client via a link. The client would then click on the link within their browser and they're able to look at it on a phone or tablet. They can physically turn with their phone to view the design. And it's really just a fun way to engage with your client and enable them to evaluate the plan you've been working on. So let's jump back into the program. And you can see when I open up Chief Architect Premier, we are currently working in our working plan view. I'm going to switch this over to our kitchen and bath plan view as this is better set for our bathroom design. And we will work with a couple different plan views as we navigate through our plan today so that I can better show you how this tool is utilized. This is where most of the design and editing will be done. So I'll click on that plan view and we'll go over to our wall tools. Here are our wall options. You can choose between a straight exterior wall, a straight interior wall, straight foundation wall, slabbed footing, pony wall. We have different glass wall options, half wall, room divider, or wall material region. I'm going to choose my straight interior wall as we're working with an interior space. I'll click on it and then click within my plan to draw out the wall and I can get this wall close to accurate but it doesn't have to be completely in place at this time because I'm going to go back and dimension out my space using my dimensioning tools. So I'll just pull this down and around and then we need room for a hallway as well as water closet and I want to pull up my plan so I'm just going to hold down my mouse and pull it up into place and now we can dimension. On our architectural toolbar we have automatic dimensioning tools as well as manual. Here are our manual tools. We can choose between a manual dimension, end-to-end -end dimension, an angular dimension, interior dimension, and so forth. You also have the option to grab those automatic dimensions from here. And then if I click within my room, I wanted to highlight in our edit toolbar, we can quickly access our auto interior dimensioning tool. So I'll click on that for our other rooms and then we can use this as a guide for dimensioning out our space. Notice that the dimension is locating to the surface layer. Because we're in our kitchen and path plan view, we can use this to now dimension out the space. And you'll notice as I go around my plan, the software thinks in inches, so I don't even need to apply the inch marker. I can just grab the wall and then set the dimension. And this is 98 and that's exactly where I need it to be. And then we'll go through and let's first grab that wall, 54 inches exactly, and then 90 here. 
And then for my hallway, I'm going to set this at 42 inches and click Enter. I want to show you now that we've dimensioned out our space, our dimensions have been pulled further away from the wall. If you want to clean up your dimension string, you can just click within the room, click on our auto interior dimensioning tool, and that will refresh those dimensions. And those look a lot better. From here, I like to keep a pretty clean plan. Now that I've already dimensioned out my bath, I don't need to show those dimensions as I move forward. So I'm going to go and select a dimension and down in my edit toolbar I have the option to marquee select similar objects. You can set the scoping here. I'm going to grab those similar objects. You can see it grabbed all of my dimensions and I'll click delete on the keyboard and that will remove them from the plan. Next let's see what we've created so far by accessing our camera tools. We can choose between a full camera. This will allow us to create multi-floor views of our 3D model. It's a camera that takes a good perspective of the space and it can be used both on the interior as well as the exterior. We also have our perspective full overview. This will create a view of the entire model, including all the floors, the ceiling, and the roof, where our perspective floor overview creates a view of the current floor with the ceiling removed. It's often referred to as our dollhouse view. And then we also have the option to use a framing view. This will display all the framing within the model. But the first view I want to take is going to be a full camera. So I'll click on this camera view. Then just click within my plan to drag it out into place. And you can see just by adding those walls, we have a ceiling that has appeared. We have paint finish on our walls, molding, as well as a floor. If we want to make changes to this particular room, I can click on my spacebar, double click within the room. This will open up our room specification dialog. Here on the general panel, we can select the room type. Right now it's unspecified, but I'll change this over to a bath and it will automatically update the room name and show the room label. You also have the ability to determine the living area as well as if a room is going to be conditioned or not conditioned. I will accept the defaults for now and we'll drop down to our structure panel. Here within our structure panel is where you can control the ceiling and floor heights. You also have relative heights that can be set so you can set your rough ceiling height as well as finished ceiling. Right now we have a flat ceiling over our room you could deselect this if you wanted to create a vaulted ceiling. We have decking panels here. I'm going to skip past this as we're working on an interior space. As far as our moldings panel, right now we're using our default base molding for our bath. I'm going to click to remove it, delete it from our plan. And then you have additional control over a wall covering. For example, this would be common in like a shower or if you wanted to apply like a wallpaper. You also have the ability to change the fill style, materials, components, as well as schedule. I'm going to click OK to see the changes that have been made so far. And you can see just by changing this room to a bathroom, our flooring has been updated and different attributes will also change. So as we get further along and we work with our electrical tools, for example, the software is intelligent enough to automatically place GFCI outlets. From here, I'll open up my 360 panoramic image. You can see we have a pocket door leading into our water closet, as well as a doorway leading down into our hallway. These are the next two items I'm going to add within the program. So getting back into Chief Architect, you can see we have our full camera view selected. And then we also have our kitchen and bath plan view open on the left side. I want to work with two views. The way to quickly do this would be to go up to our window drop down menu. I can tile horizontally or tile vertically. You can also achieve this by holding down Shift F6 on your keyboard or by grabbing the view you want to bring down and just dragging it down into place. From here we'll go up to our door options and I can choose between a hinge door, a doorway, a sliding door, pocket door, bifold door, garage door, fixed barn or shower door. 
I'll select to place my pocket door and then just click within my plan to apply it. I can select the door and then set the dimension. We'll set this at nine inches and you can see that adjust over in our camera view. Next, I'll wanna rotate further along this plan. So I'm gonna click within the room, go up to my mouse orbit tool and we'll just click on that camera to rotate around and this will give us a view of that back wall. From here, we'll go back up to our door tools. I'll grab my doorway. I can apply it within 2D, or I can also click to just apply it within 3D. If I select the door, here I'll have that dimension I can update, and now that is dimensioned into place. Bringing up our 360 panoramic image, we'll continue along the wall, and you can see next up is our glass shower. For our glass shower, we'll be adding in a wall niche, window, bench, I'll be adjusting materials, as well as placing hardware. So I'll open up the program again, and this time I'm gonna close out of that full camera view. I'll zoom back out of my plan view, bring it up into place, and this time we'll go and grab our glass wall. So I'm gonna grab my straight glass wall, click within my plan to apply two of those walls, and going up to our dimensioning options, I'm gonna choose an interior dimension and I can manually pull these into place. Our first wall for our shower needs to be set 66 inches. And then that adjacent wall, I'm gonna update that to 72 inches and hit enter. And now that's adjusted. So I wanna clean up this view just a bit and to do that, I'm gonna select the room label and I have the option in my edit toolbar to click on my object layer properties. Here we can see we're using our room label and it's currently being displayed. I'm gonna to click to remove that as well as my room dimension and click okay and that will be updated. And for our shower, I can do the same thing. So I can select the dimension and click to remove it from our current display and we'll select okay and see that has been updated. Next, I need a point of entry into our shower, so we'll go up to our door tools. I'm gonna select a shower door this time, and I'll click to place it. I'm gonna hold down my mouse, and you can see that I have control now for choosing the side I want to place the door as well as where I want it to swing. We can also select the door itself, and in our edit toolbar, you can control the, both the opening and hinge side as well as the swing side, and you can show the door open. You also have the ability to get into the door specification dialog, and here's where we can modify the door style, the type of door we're working with. If you need to change the width, height, or thickness, you can drop down into our options under our next panel, and here's where you can choose between a single door, a double door, or you can also calculate from the width. For our plan display, you have additional control. You can calculate and display if we're gonna show our 3D display closed or open. I'm gonna show the door open in 3D. We can show the swing side to have it swing from both directions, which I'm gonna do so since it's a shower. And then for safety, I wanted to point out Chief Architect automatically selects tempered glass. So this is a safety measure already included within the program. If for whatever reason you didn't wanna have a tempered glass door, you can deselect it here. You also have control under the casing, lintel, lights, jam, arches, hardware, panels. We'll jump down to hardware. And I wanna show you right now, we're currently using our default hardware for an interior handle. I can switch this over to a pull handle and that will update. And I can also match the exterior handle as well. So this is a new feature that's included with X12. So I'm just gonna click to match it and now I don't have to navigate to find that hardware. You also have the option to get into your library and you can find additional hardware here. If I go down to my hinges drop down. I'll just select a standard hinge, and we can see that update over here in our preview. So once you're satisfied with the door that you wanna select, you can click OK, and that will be added to your shower. And then I'm going to control 
the hinge here and with it selected I'll just bump it back into place and now that has been modified. I'd like to take a wall elevation now. I'm going to access this tool by going up to my orthographic tools. Here I can choose between a cross-section elevation view, a back-clipped cross-section, or grab that wall elevation. I'll do that now, click within my shower, and drag out the elevation here. I'll start designing this wall by accessing our wall niche tool under our window drop-down options. You can choose between a standard window, bay window, box window, bow, pass-through, or that wall niche. I'll grab it and then click to place it within the plan. Double click to open it up for specification. Here's where I'm going to set the width to 16 inches. The height is going to be updated to 45 inches. And then the floor to top dimension I want to set at 70 inches as well as the depth, I'm going to increase this to three and a half inches. And we can look at our preview over here and see all those adjustments. When we're happy with the way the wall niche looks, we'll click OK. And now that has been modified on the wall. I want to make sure it's centered, so with the niche still selected, I'll click on my center object tool and click to center it along the wall. Next, I want to add some shelving to this niche. So we'll go up to our cabinet drop down menu. Here you can choose between a base cabinet, a wall cabinet, a full height, soffit, shelf, partition. We have some custom options listed below, but I'm just going to grab my shelf and then click within my plan to place it. I'll double click on it to open it up for specification. And I'm going to change the width here to 15.5 inches. We'll keep the height set at three quarters of an inch. The depth needs to be updated to three. And then that finished floor to top dimension needs to be changed to 37 inches. And I'll click tab and OK. And now we want to center the shelf within the niche. So I'll use that center object tool. I'll click to make sure that I get the proper feedback and then it'll place it. And then we also have the option to make a copy of it. So with it still selected, I'm going to copy and that is going to paste it in place and then I can just pull up the shelf within the niche. And now that's been updated. The next item I want to add is going to be our window. So we'll go up to my window tools, click on my standard window, click within my plan to place it, double click to open it up. Right now I'm using our default window, but I'm going to change this to a left sliding window. I'll update the width of the window to 48 inches, and then the height is going to be modified to 18 inches. Then the floor to top dimension needs to be changed to 94 inches, and you can see that adjust. In addition to just changing the information on our general panel, I do have some additional changes I need to make to this window. So you have additional control under your options panel. I'm actually going to drop down into casing and I'll remove the interior casing. And then I'm going to continue down through my panels and remove the interior sill as well as frame. If you wanted to add lights to your window, here's where you would do so. You can change the shape of the window as well. For example, if you want your window to match your roof line. Arches can also be incorporated as well as treatments and shutters to add to your design. We'll click OK to accept these changes and now you can see that's been modified. Just to confirm that this window is centered, I'm going to use my center object tool and center it once more. The next item we want to add is going to be our shower bench. And to do this, I'm actually going to use my Polyline Solid Tool. So this is also available up within our architectural toolbar. This is a handy tool that can be used to easily draw unique custom objects and shapes such as countertops of fixtures, or in our case, a shower bench. If you're an existing Chief Architect user, this tool has enhanced functionality in X12 and more information is available regarding improvements directly on our website. So I'll select the tool. I'm going to click within my plan, snap to the edge here, and then I'll select the top edge, modify this to 18 inches. 
with our polyline solid selected, I'll hold down Control E on my keyboard, open up my polyline solid specification dialog for modifications. I'm going to change the thickness here to 18 inches, and then I'll click OK on my keyboard to see that adjust. From here, I want to complete our wall elevation by adding in some dimensions. So we'll go up to our automatic dimensioning tools. I'll select my NKBA auto elevation dimension. And here, it has automatically placed dimensions for this wall. I can select a dimension string by tapping on my spacebar and removing markers that I might not need to locate. So this is grabbing our shelves. And if you want to add a marker, you can select the dimensioning string and pull up a marker that needs to be added. We'll grab that wall as well and you can make the adjustments as necessary. I'm going to exit out of my elevation view. I'm not going to save it as I'll create a new elevation as we work on our layout sheets. So from here I'm going to take a new camera view. This time we'll grab a perspective floor overview and I'm going to zoom in to our shower and this time I want to open up our library browser. So I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard as well as L and that will bring up our library browser. Over here you can see we have different folders that we can choose from. We have our Chief Architect core catalogs. These are folders that house a wide selection of 3D symbols, images, CAD objects, and materials. They can be downloaded immediately after the program is installed. We also have our bonus catalog, and this is additional updated content uh, that we add to our website that can be downloaded as well. We also have manufacturer catalogs. These are name brand library catalogs that are available for download within Chief Architect. They range from materials to fixtures to CAD blocks. And then we have our user catalog. And our user catalog is a location of items that you can add to your library and use within your drawing so it's easily accessible. And I'll touch upon these catalogs as we continue through our plan. I'm going to get into my user catalog first and I want to show you that we can quickly access a material. So I have saved a Carrera Ice material to my folder and I want to apply it. So once I select the material down in my edit toolbar, you'll notice I have additional scoping options. The first option over on the left is our component mode. If we paste in component mode, it'll apply it to a particular part of an object. If we select object, it would update that material for a whole object, for example, a cabinet. You can update for a room, and if we stick with using the cabinet example, all cabinets within a room can be updated. If you did the same using floor mode and pasted, it would just update like if you had cabinets in a bathroom and a kitchen. And then plan mode is example if you have multiple floors, you want to update the same material. That's when plan mode would be a great option for you. So I'm going to apply this material to the room and I'll click on it and I'll apply it to both walls. And then I also want to get in and add a hex tile. So this hex tile is going to be updated for the floor and I'll switch back over to component mode and I'll paste it on the wall niche as well as the floor. And I can see I'm going to have to orbit a little further. I'm going to grab the glass. So I'll select it again and then now I can paste it. I also want to update the material of my bench. By looking at it, I'm going to update it with the Carrera Ice. You can also use existing materials within your plan. So I'm going to grab my material eyedropper, select the finish off of my shelf, and apply it to the rest of my niche. And now it's one cohesive unit. We can also go into our bonus catalog and complete our shower by adding in some hardware. So I'll scroll down to bathroom accessories. I have a shower hardware folder and here you can select between individually applying different components or I also have a completed assembly that I can just click on the wall and place it and that completes the shower. From here I'm going to pull down my plan view and this will be a good time to get back into our 360 render and we'll move along our wall and see where we're going next. So we do have some individual accessories I want to apply. We'll add in our windows and then some fixtures and then we're going to complete 
our plan today with our vanity. So we'll jump back into the program and from here I'll get into my user folder again so I can quickly just minimize my folder and I have individual items that I want to place. So I do have a sign that's going to be applied and before I apply it I'm going to move down that wall just a bit. We can zoom in. Let's rotate so we can get a better view. And I'll grab my Be Kind sign, click to apply it along the wall. I also have a ladder that I want to apply and I'll just click to apply that as well as a plant and I can click to place that component too. Now if I like this configuration and want to use it again in the future, what I can do is tap on my spacebar, select each individual item, and we have the ability to block them together. Down in that edit toolbar is the architectural block tool and I can just click and now it's one unit and I can apply that to my library. You can give it a name so we can rename it. I'll just name that block and then hit tab that will adjust and then I can add it directly to my bathroom folder and now that's available to use in the future. From here we're going to jump back into our window tools and I'm going to grab a standard window. I'll click to place it along the wall. Double click to open it up for specification. I'm going to change the window type to a triple hopper. I'll also change the width here to 54 inches. Hit tab and then we'll adjust the height to 64 inches. The floor to bottom dimension will be updated to 30 inches. And from here I'm going to jump down to my casing panel. I want to match our existing window so that it has a similar look. So we'll just copy over some of those additional changes. Keep the defaults for the sash set but remove the frame. And I'll click OK. And you can see that's been adjusted. I also want to make sure this is dimensioned correctly so I want to make it at 15. It was very close but exactly 15 inches and then with it selected I can copy this window and we'll just paste it into place on that adjacent wall and I can center it and now that's been updated. So from here I'll grab my cast iron tub. I'm going to click to place it within the plan. And then I also want to apply a filler. So I have a filler saved in my library. So I can just go down and grab my single filler, click to place it, and I need to rotate it around and bring it into place. Next, I'll close out of our camera view. And we're going to zoom out and I'm going to take a different camera view of this space. We'll do a full camera. Click and drag it out so we can get a good view of our vanity space. And from here, I'll click to add a standard base cabinet. So I'll go up to our cabinet tools, click on our base cabinet, and then just click to place it. This is what a typical standard base cabinet would look like in the program. We can make adjustments though. I want to change the standard cabinet to a manufacturer cabinet. So we're going to go up to our manufacturer catalogs. This time I'm going to get into a new catalog that we've just added to Chief Architect X12 and that is our Play-Doh Woodwork Ink catalog. Here I'm going to select our Innove line and you can choose between applying accessories, doors, finishes, specialty materials, and woods. The first thing I want to apply is going to be the doors. We'll get into our classic line and I'm going to add a classic door as well as drawer. And you can see all I have to do is click on the component and it will automatically switch it out. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like and how that's applied. And you can see it over on the side view here. I'm going to rotate. You'll see that the box has remained the same. And I wanted to show you this because when we get into applying finishes, for example, so I'll select a wood first. It'll be a cherry wood and I'll click to apply it. You can see we're still in component mode. So if I change that over to object mode, for example, 
it's just going to update the drawer. I need to paste one more time because the material is different for the remaining part of the box. I can then apply a finish. So I'll get in and, and select my cherry finish options. And here I'm going to grab my coastal gray and apply it to the whole cabinet. And now that's been updated. I can also get into the cabinet itself and make some additional changes. So I'll tap on my space bar, double click on the cabinet, we'll open it up for specification. Here I'm going to keep the cabinet type set at standard. I'm going to change the width to 36 inches and the height is going to be updated to 24. I want to update my finished floor to bottom dimension. I'll set this at 8 inches. This will raise the box 8 inch off the finished floor platform. As far as our countertop, the thickness is set at one and a half inches with a one inch uniform overhang. And I'm going to deselect this, remove it from the right side, and then we'll drop down to our backsplash option. Here's where you can set a height and thickness if you want to add your backsplash. I'm going to remove the toe kick. This will change the cabinet look and feel. And then if we drop over to our box construction panel, Here's where you can specify if you're working with a framed or frameless cabinet. You can also choose to have a traditional overlay or full overlay or even keep it as an inset cabinet. For the cabinet corner treatment, you can also determine if you want it rounded or clipped. I'm going to accept all the defaults for now and we'll drop down to our front sides and back panel. Here I want to make an additional change to a face item. So we have a drawer that we're using on the top. I'm also going to change this bottom portion to a drawer as well. We can update that here. And you can make changes if you want to equalize the drawers. This is where you could do so. I'm going to get into the top drawer and change this to a false drawer as we'll be adding in a sink. Now if we drop down to our door and drawer panel, here's where you can customize the hardware being used. So right now I want to change the drawer handle to a pool. This will be a horizontal pool. I'll select it and you can see that update now. We'll click OK and now you can see the changes in our camera view. If I click on the cabinet itself, I can set this as my default cabinet. We did spend time designing. So I want to show you, it'll notify us that this is now our new default base cabinet. We'll click OK and then I'll get back into my cabinet tools and show you how this has been modified. So I'm going to move this over. We'll grab a base cabinet. I'll click to replace it and you can see that's been updated. If we want to make any changes, I can double click on it to open it up. Here I do want to change the width. We're going to modify it to 24 inches click tab, we can see the adjustment being made. And then if I get down into the front sides and back panel, I'm going to change the components. We're going to change this over to an opening. And we'll also set another opening as well. And click OK to accept the changes. And then I'll just pull this directly into place. I'll go up and grab one more base cabinet. We'll click to apply it, bring it into place and you can see the adjustments here. From this point, I do want to make one final change to our countertop, and that's going to be to add our waterfall cabinet. This is a new feature available within Chief Architect X12. So I'll click on each of these cabinets. I'm holding down control, and from here, I'm going to create a custom countertop. If I click on the selected edge, I'm able to apply a waterfall, and then I can click on that adjacent edge as well and get that updated. And now it's been modified. So the next thing I want to do is just to finalize accessorizing this vanity space. And we could do that by getting back into our folder. So we'll scroll down to our folder here, bring up our materials, and then I'm also going to go back into my cabinet options and I'll click to add a custom backsplash. I can just click along this wall and it'll automatically place it. And then if I want to change the material to be cohesive with the rest of my design, I'll just select that hex tile and click to apply it. I also want to add an undermount sink to our vanity. So I'm going to type in undermount sink. And this will search our folders. 
So we can find something specific. We can just click and then I will click to place that sink on both sides and that has been updated. We'll go back over to our folder so I can just clear our search and then we will add in our beveled rectangular mirror. I'll just click on top of my backsplash to place it. I want to center it above my sink. I'll use it as a guide, grab another copy of it, and then just place it over the other sink and we'll center it. The next thing I need to do is add some shelving. So we'll get into our cabinet options, grab that shelf, and I'm just going to click to place it double click to open it up for specification. Here I'm going to set the width to 16 inches. I'll keep the height set at 3 quarters of an inch. The depth set at 12. We'll click OK to see the changes. And from here I want to make a couple copies of it. So we can use our transform replicate tool. I'm going to make three more or two more copies for three total shelves. And then we'll move the additional copies in the Z delta positive 11 inches. We'll click OK and you can see that adjustment being made. I also have the option to grab that material so I'll use my material eyedropper, pick it up off the cabinet and then apply it to each of those shelves. From here I want to accessorize my shelves so I'll place my shelf accessories. Click within my plan to place them. I am going to get a pop-up alerting me that it's going to conflict with another object. Do I want to place them anyway? I'll say yes. And then I can click on the objects themselves, hold down control, and then just bring them directly into place. I'll tap on my space bar from here. And then I want to move over to our plan view. I'll drag down our plan view and I'm going to add in some electrical items. So we'll switch over from our kitchen and bath plan view over to our electrical plan view. And here I'll grab a sconce and I'll click to place it. And then I'll make a copy of it and we're going to reflect it on the other side of our sink and we'll do the same on the other side of our vanity. So we'll take that sconce, click to place it, copy it, and place it on the other side of the sink. And now that's been updated. So I do want to place one other item from our library here. That's going to be our chandelier over our bathtub. And from here, we're going to add some additional electrical items. So we're going to zoom out and we're going to close out of our library for now. I'll show you just because we're in this view, we haven't placed our standard toilet. So I will apply that as well just to finish off the bathroom. And then I'll exit out of the library browser. And while we're in our electrical, we need to go up to our electrical tools. Here I can place outlets, lights, rope lighting, switches. We can auto place outlets and connect electrical. I do want to place a rope light underneath my vanity. So I'll click to apply that now and double click to open it up for specification. Right now it's floating. So I'm going to place that eight inches off the floor and that'll reside right under that vanity. We'll click OK to apply that adjustment. And then we'll get in and add a few recessed lights. So I can click to place the light. I'm going to click on the light and we'll make a couple copies of it. So we'll go to our multiple copy tool. I'm going to apply two copies, one more row. We'll click OK and I'll hold down my mouse to pull these lights into place and then I can pull them back as well. With our lights being set within our bathroom, I also have the option to add in our switches. So I'll go around our room and place our switches. And then we can connect our electrical. So I'll connect our electrical here, also above our vanity. and then we can connect the remaining lights to finish off that plan. If we need to modify the connections, we can do so by pulling them in. And then one handy tool I want to show you is how we can auto place outlets. I'll just click within my room and now you can see we have a GFCI outlet placed.
from here we'll open up our camera view again and I'm going to show you some rendering options. So within our plan we are currently looking at our standard render. We can quickly change this over to our vector view and our vector view is helpful when you want to show a client and pull the materials or textures out of the design so they're not focused on those components. I'll select that now so you can see it in action. I'm going to jump down to technique options because we can access the same tools from this view and I'll show you as we're working in our view you also have controls over on the right so if we jump down to our glass house option for example this allows you to see through all of the cabinetry we can see through the walls we also have a dual tone this pulls out the color in the design our technical illustration is similar to a vector view, but it allows you to adjust a warm color and cool color. And then you have the control over the sliders as to what capacity you want to show that. We have a painting option, a watercolor. One of my favorite options is doing a watercolor with a line drawing on top, and that's what you can see now. And then we also have a physically based render. Here is a sample of our completed physically based render. I've made adjustments to the lighting, the materials, the camera settings, and it gives a really fast, quick render that you can show to your clients. So from here, I'm going to jump back over to my standard view. I'll click OK. I'll bring up that library one more time. I want to show you one more feature new to Chief Architect X12, and that is our style palettes. So our style palette options gives you a way to quickly show a customer what different materials would look like. So where our rendering techniques are great if you're kind of wanting to mute down different materials, if you want to show them specific options, you can click within your style palettes. So here's another option of what our bathroom would look like if I clicked and I want to make sure that I update to floor mode and then click within the room you can see that with my style palette I was able to quickly just adjust the materials. So the flooring changed, I gave a different option for our vanity as well as that backsplash got modified and then we can click on another style option, click within the room and you can see the flooring, vanity and backsplash also changed as well. So different materials you can adjust quickly to show customers. and option A will bring us back to where we started. From here I want to show you how you can create cabinet schedules. So we're going to go up to CAD, down to CAD Detail Management. I'm going to create a new cabinet schedule. So I'll type in Cabinet Schedule and this will open up another sheet of paper basically where we can send our cabinet schedule. So now we'll go up to Tools down to schedules and over to cabinet schedule. I'll place a cabinet schedule by just clicking and I can double click on that cabinet schedule to open it up. Here we have control over adding different views to our cabinet schedule. So I can add a perspective view and I'll move that up the list and I'll place it right under number and then you have the option to remove items that you don't need. So I'm just going to show you I can get in here and delete a few columns. We'll click OK and now you can see that cabinet schedule has been updated and we can use it when creating our layout sheets. Here's a sample plan set designed in Chief Architect. You can toggle between the different pages. We have a floor plan and elevations. If we get back into our program, we can create our own by going to File and creating a new layout. You can open an existing layout or you can access a layout from template. So we're going to do New Layout from Template and I'll, create, I'll click on my kitchen and bath template, click OK and open it up. And here's where we can send different views to our layout sheet. On page zero, you have the ability to control information that will carry forward. So all the information that's updated here will be updated on your full plan set. If you go to page one, you have a company logo. We have an ability to add a plan name as well as change the information that we're being displayed. So if we want to add our floor plan to page one, for example, it's already set as well as the page number. 
You can also modify text. If we jump back into our plan view, right now we have that electrical plan view set, but we can switch back over to our kitchen and bath plan view. And then I can send a view to our layout sheet. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get rid of a few of the items here. So I'm going to just turn off the display on interior furniture and that will clean it up a bit more. And the next thing we'll do, in fact, we can just delete out of this camera view. The next thing we'll do is get some dimensions, we'll dimension out our space. And then we can send this view to our layout sheet. So we would go to file and then send to layout. And you have the option to specify the page number you want to send the view to layout. I'll set the scaling to a quarter inch equals a foot. We'll click OK and now that's been added to our plan view where you can add additional items as you need. We could skip over to page two. If we go back into our kitchen and bath plan view, I can also take an elevation view. I'll do a wall elevation of our cabinets. And here we can also dimension this out and I'll use my auto elevation tool and I'm going to get in here and clean up the dimensions just a bit. And I'll send this view to our layout by going to file, send to layout, and we'll send this over at a half inch equals a foot and click OK. And you have the ability to move that around as well. So this is going to conclude our presentation for today. I thank you so much for joining. All of our design work was created in Chief Architect Premiere, though all the tools I use today are also available within Chief Architect Interiors. Both programs can be purchased in full or we also have a rental option for both. The difference between the two would be the rental terms, but they are both available to rent for $199 a month. And if you decide to purchase or if you decide to go the rental route, both options will include support and software assurance. If you want to learn more about what would be the best fit for you, please feel free to email our sales team at sales at chiefarchitect.com or you can also call us and we'd be able to assist you.